In the last lesson, we learned how to select a monster and get that selection to show up here. In this video, we're going to show how to save that monster in the query params. And then we're going to show how to save a second monster in the query params as well, which is surprisingly more difficult than just saving one. But the good news, once you learn how to do two, you can do three, four, five, six, etc., really easily. What we have right now is a property monster ID, which is a string, which is just saved in memory. And so when we click one of these, it changes the monster ID. And then the monster is calculated from that. What we want to do is put the monster ID in the query params. So we could do question mark monster ID equals four. And if we went there, then we'd want it to show Charmander. One naive way to do this would be to do window.location.href. So we get that, and then we call split on the question mark. So the second one is all of the query params, and then uh, we split on the and, and then we find the one split on the equal, find the one with the key of monster ID, but there's two problems. One, it's a big pain, and second, it doesn't work with SSR. So let's do it the svelte way. We're going to import the page store, and we'll talk about what stores are in a later video. But for now, just know that to access the value of the page store, you do dollar sign page. And this is an object object, of course, because there's lots of stuff on here. We can see our autocomplete offers us data, error, form, params, route, status, and URL. You may think params, but this is actually not for query params. This is for uh, something else we'll talk about when we talk about dynamic routing. So we'll get the URL, and then we can get the search params from that. And so we call .get, and we'll get monster ID. And there we go, we have the monster ID of four. Now we want to hook it back in with our other code. So let's cut this here and remove the curly braces and then just set this to be by default equal to the monster ID. And so we can see that we can still change it. And so we get the default that's in the query params and then we can make changes later. But there are a couple problems. First, uh, it has an issue with the typing. And so what we have to do is say, all right, so the default is actually just an empty string. That's just a TypeScript thing. The second issue is that when we change this and reload, it resets back to Charmander because we're not actually changing the query params yet. So let's go ahead and make that change here in monster click. So we do still want to reset the monster ID, but we also want to change the query params. So we're going to do that in two ways. The first way, we're going to just take what we have now and add a go to. And so we're going to go to monster ID equals monster ID, where we're filling in that data. And there we go. The ID up here is changing. And you can see that when we reload, it has it still selected. Let me click here so you can see that we are indeed reloading it. The second option is to get rid of this function entirely. And here, instead of having a div that has an on click, we should have an A that has an href. And we'll set the monster ID query params to the monster.id. And of course, make sure to close out this tag. And then we'll see that this is kind of working. You can see the issue is that we click a monster and the monster ID here changes, but it doesn't change here. And that's because this monster ID, it gets the query param right when the page loads, but not again until you reload the page again. And so how to fix that is you make it reactive. And so when we do that, and make it calculate from the search params. Now, it's working like we expect. 
The trade-off is that the query params are now the source of truth. And so you can't just go changing the monster ID directly. A quick aside for people who've used other JavaScript meta frameworks. So you may be looking at this A tag and thinking, oh no, we did something wrong because this is gonna reload the entire page. In other meta frameworks, you have to do something like a link component. However, in SvelteKit, you don't have to do that. An A tag will work just fine and you will not reload the entire page. It'll work just like a link component does in the other meta frameworks. So this is fantastic, but what if we want to keep track of a second monster? So now this complicates things because we need to include both query params. So first, let's go ahead and add it in our second monster ID. So we'll call it monster ID two and we'll make it Charmander for now. And so we've got that there. Let's go ahead and copy some of the code that we've got. So we'll just change this to monster ID two and have this resolve to monster two. And then we will take this and turn this into monster two. And cool, we're showing Charmander. But how do we get it so we can change the second one without deleting the first one? So let's do something that is a partial solution. So it is super naive if you do it just on its own, but it'll get us part way to where we want to go. So we're going to separate out the uh, styling of the monster card from the href. And so we're going to get this in here. And then we are going to do a second link tag. And we're going to do the second monster in there. So we're going to say add monster to. And so now we've got a link here and we click this and it does change the second one. But like we predicted, it deletes the first one. And if we click the first one, it changes that but deletes the second one. Now let's try a new solution. And spoiler, this won't quite get us what we want and see if you can spot the bug before I show it to you. So we're going to have a function called generate search params and we'll feed it the key of the search param that we want to change and the value that we want to change it to. And so we will go ahead and generate this and Copilot knows exactly what we want. And so what it'll do is it'll grab the current search params from the page store, and then it will set one of the search params using the key and value we gave it. And then it'll turn it back into a string that'll turn into the URL. So we can see that it works for the first use case of just setting the monster ID. Now let's go ahead and use it to generate the second monster ID. So generate search params, we'll put in monster ID two and feed in the monster.id. And when we first click, like, oh wow, this works. This seems to be working pretty well. We can reload, we can change the other one and then we can change the second one and oh no, notice what happened. When we changed, uh-oh, we're changing multiple monsters at the same time here and not in a way we expect. So what's happening? What's happening is that we are generating the link when the page is loaded and these links do not regenerate when you click another link and change the query params. So if we inspect this, we'll see that the link is to a monster ID of one and a monster ID two of three. And when we click that, it indeed changes both of them. The good news is that this is a fairly easy fix. So instead of returning a string, we will just use that string in a go to and that go to will uh, be assembled right when we need it. 
So right when we click the button, not when we're generating links at the beginning. So we'll rename this update search params. And of course we'll have to have these not as links, but as divs with a on click function. And this function, so we'll need to update it to update search params. And also we'll need to make it so that it calls this so that we can get the uh, correct parameters as expected. And of course there is an error if we don't update both of them. And close these out. There we go. And now they are working as expected. So we'll go ahead and add monster two and change this first monster, no issue. Change the second monster, no issue. So this is finally working as expected. So adding the second query param was actually quite a bit more difficult than adding the first one because of the added complexity. But you can see that this will expand to any number of query params, however many you need. And in two videos, we're going to expand to add a third query param for search. In the meantime, in the next video, we're going to be taking these two monsters and making them display just as nicely as these monsters. And to do it, we're not going to copy and paste this code up here. What we're going to do is create a reusable component. Be sure to like, subscribe, and get on the playlist, or go to js-pokemon.com, and then I'll see you in the next lesson.